Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. I'm Anthony Wood and this is Shop Mad. Now, I've been getting questions why have I called the channel Shop Mad. Now, it's pretty simple from where I come from because, well, we say we've mad stuff or we're gonna mad stuff. So, hence the reason, Shop Mad instead of Shop Made. Does that make sense? Right, so in today's video I'm going to be making some wooden bar clamps. Now, I've scoured YouTube for ideas and I've come across a channel by a guy called John Highs. His channel's called I Build It. Now I'm going to leave a link for John to his channel, I Build It, in the description down below. Basically because some of his ideas and methods are, well, they are brilliant. So well done John and keep up the good work and I hope you don't mind us stealing a couple of your ideas. The clamps themselves, I'm going to make these out of hardwood, basically ash because I've got a huge amount lying around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mill some of this hardwood down to 91 centimetres long, which is going to give us a clamping area of approximately 700 millimetres. I've got the ash milled down now to 91 centimetres long by 35 deep by 30 millimetres wide. Now we need to replicate these these cutouts I've made on this clamp. Now what this is for is it just enables full adjustment for the clamp and when it pushes back into the groove well it locks itself in place so it makes them fully adjustable and they've been working a treat so far so this is the design I'm going to go for now to mark out these these grooves I'm going to measure in 35 millimeters for the first groove and then 30 millimeters thereafter for every groove Now I'm just going to mark in a 20 degree angle and this is just a chamfer so the clamping head can actually lock in position. Now in order to cut these notches out I'm just going to use the bandsaw but if you haven't got a bandsaw just use a handsaw and you'll get it just take a little bit longer that's all. I'm now turning my attention to this part of the clamp, it's actually the head. Now, I need to make two pieces out of this piece of stock which measures 50 mil by 30 millimeters. Now, I'm going to have to make two sections at 160 millimeters. So I'm going to get this marked out now and get them cut. Now I'm going to need a sandwich the clamp on the end. Now in order to do this I'm going to have to mark up on one end 40 millimetres. Now this is going to give us the bottom edge of the line which is going to sit like this. Now on the top edge I'm just going to put a quick mark and then I can transfer the marks across the two. I'm just going to set the blade height now to 15 millimeters so I can cut out this section here which is going to sandwich over the top of the adjustment bar. Now I've got this little gauge from Trend which is basically meant to set up your router bits but I use it on the table saw as well so I've zeroed it out 
and when you put it over the top of the blade it's the and when you wind it up you can get it exactly at whatever height you want in my case 15 millimeters Because the headstock's really square and bulky I'm just going to cut a section out here at a 45 degree angle just to take that edge off. I've marked the hole centre where I need to drill through for the threaded bar. Um, the measurement is 115 millimeters up from the bottom of the tailstock and then 30 millimeters in. Now this will give you the hole center which you need to drill through. I'm just going to use some 10 millimeter threaded bar uh, for this clamping mechanism. I've put the corresponding nut on the end and I'm going to insert the threaded bar through the headstock. Now I'm just going to trace the shape of the nut onto the headstock. For a handle I'm just going to machine some more ash down to 30mm square by 130mm long. I'm going to start making the movable clamp now um, which will sit here and it will be pushed into place by using a threaded bar. Now I want this piece here to straddle over the top of the main beam itself so uh, the only way I can figure of doing this is to use the bandsaw so I'm going to get this marked out and then I'm going to take it up the bandsaw and then I'm just going to get the small piece cut out off here.
Right, so I've now got the first part of the uh, clamp assembly made and it's sliding up and down the main beam ideal. Now what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to mark a hole centre and I'm going to bore this piece out so it accepts a washer and the nut which is going to be secured on the end of the 10mm threaded bar. Right, so the thread bars cut to length now. I've installed the the nut. Um, it's a nylock nut, so it kind of locks itself on. But to make sure, I'd actually burn over the end just using a hammer, and then use the centre punch just to distort the thread, so the nut can't pull back off. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start assembling. Um, I'm just going to put a small washer in to start with, then just a little bit of lubricant so the nuts got something to, to slide up against now to attach the handle to the threaded bar I'm just going to use some Gorilla Glue and then I'm just going to leave it to set overnight. I now need two pieces of this stock which measures 50 millimeters by 30 millimeters. Now I need to cut two pieces at 145 millimeters. And now similar to the headstock where I had to cut a channel so the headstock would sandwich over the bar itself. Now I'm going to make this channel just a little bit bigger so it allows the adjustable clamp just to move up and down the length of the bar. So I've got the two halves now cut out and they're channeled so I can easily slide them over the top of the main beam. Now as you can see this will slide freely backwards and forwards. While the glue's drying on the other clamp, I figured I'd make up some clamp pads um, for the two clamp heads. So I've got some mahogany lying around and I figured these would be ideal because it'll accent really well once I get these oiled and waxed up. So I'm just going to machine these down now over on the bandsaw. Right, so for the locker mechanism, I'm just going to use a standard hinge. So what I'm going to do is, just to give this a trial, I'm just going to install it on the back of this clamping block. And surprisingly enough, it works a treat.
Well, I think the clamps turned out really good. Um, all that's left to do now is just to put a coat of finish on it. Now I'm just going to use boiled linseed oil there for this application. And once that's dried, I'm going to leave it overnight. And once it's dried, I'm going to come back and going to put some clear furniture wax on it. And that's just to stop the glue from sticking to it when I'm doing glow ups. Well guys, I'm really pleased with the way the clamps turn out. The simple idea of putting a, a hinge on the back um, as a retainer, it's just made the adjustment so easy. Now, if you like the video, please consider giving us a thumbs up and subscribe for future content. Thanks again for watching, I'm Anthony Wood and this is Shop Mad. And until the next one, bye for now.